Hi, this is Marnie from womenspeakers.com. Welcome back. We're here today with another interview with one of our favorite featured speakers, Carol Brewer from Fair Oaks, California. Welcome to you, Carol. Oh, thank you. It's great to be with you, Marnie. I'm so blessed on a beautiful spring day. Yeah. Great to be here. We got gorgeous going on here too. And hopefully wherever you are watching us today, you have a beautiful day. If it's not beautiful outside, at least it can be beautiful inside your heart. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Carol, you are here to share with us some of your favorite aha moments. And you've been walking with Jesus for a long time. And I love your heart, love your ministry. And so let's just dive right in. Oh, thanks. Music is the breeze on which the gospel can soar. Uh, music done. I've really been able to see it there where a spoken word people will pass by and not pay attention. But if it's really on beautiful sounds and that same message is being sung or, you know, even played with an instrument, uh, that message to support it, it's so gorgeous and it, it attracts. It's very attractive. And so it's definitely from the Lord, you know, and and I just love singing God's word on uh, on beautiful melodies. And that's been one of my joys is to set a lot of scriptures to melodies and you've singable. Done, yeah. You've done a lot of work with us. You've been a, a, a vocal trainer and have worked with groups and um, a different organizations. I love in your book, you tell fun stories about that. And uh, <laughs> you, you have, you know, one of the things that I think about with music is that it taps into the other side of our brain words are tapping mm. into one side and music is tapping into the other side. And right. I, believe, I honestly believe that that's why at church we have worship music first and that happens all over the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where you are, it's the worship music first and then comes the sword. It's like, you know, in the Old Testament, right. the singers well, way out, back in Old Testament, you know, the Levites marched right in yes. first and did the music and played um, to lead the army. And so that's what we're doing now. You know, it's, it's, it prepares us. It prepares, it calms us. It gives us peace that passes all understanding. It brings us into the presence of the Lord. And then we're able, the heart is made more pliable and we're able to, you know, let God's word soak in. Yep, it's absolutely. True. And it's even, um, I was thinking as you were saying that, that the Bible talks about the sword of the Lord, you know, being the word and that, that it, yeah. it divides uh, between the joints and the yeah. marrow. You think about going into surgery and how you get anesthesia first so you can relax and be all still and there calm. There you go. After, you know? so, yes, yes. It's, it, it's even, it's a lot better than anesthesia. <laughs> music is the breeze on which the gospel can soar. That's awesome. True. God gives us second chances over and over again. Uh, and a second chance wouldn't be enough for me. I need a lot of them. Actually, every day. You know, I really blow it every day. I have what you call DRAs. You know what those are, Marnie. Yeah. D dirty, rotten attitudes. <laughs> I have them. I have them every day. It's a battle, isn't it? I mean, it's just the me versus the good me when the Holy Spirit's in my heart and in my mind and, and operating in my life. But, but when I, uh, you know, don't allow him to work through me, I'm just me and I have that other side of me, that's for sure. That's been nurtured from childhood before I came to know the Lord. And, and so it's there. And so I'm so grateful when God says, you know, come on back, Carol, let's do it again. He gives me another chance. He says, let's, you know, I'm here for you. Let's try again. Let's do it. And and he he does. And I can empty myself of me and be filled with him again. And then I have again, his peace. And I'm so grateful for his provision. I'm so glad he doesn't give up after two times. I'm grateful. Oh my so goodness. grateful. For sure. And you know, he yeah. has, he is the, he has our motivation and source for being able to forgive other people over and over and over and over. over that too. Absolutely. Yeah. That forgiveness. Absolutely. The second that. chance over and over. Yes. Yes. And then that's he encourages a, us to employ it. <laughs> Yes, he does. And it's a good, uh, you know, when, when we're praying and when we're in his presence, he will do that prompt. Like, yeah. you know, that's all fine, Carol, but um, you do have a little something hanging over right now, don't you? I think you need to deal with that and, and resolve that um, unforgiveness with a certain person and then we can move on. So yes, God does that for us. Hydrate. Cleans us up. Mm, yep. Hydrate your passion with living water. Mm. Oh, it's that the woman at the well, uh, Jesus was telling her about the living water. And she, you know, she's looking at sort of the uh, physical aspect of it, like, oh, is this 
good is this super smart water does it have you know extra um electrolytes in it is i mean what kind of water is this, this is great sounds good but of course he's talking about his the spiritual aspect the eternal aspect the living water i am the living water and we need that hydration you know i dry up like a prune don't we we, we just you know we if, when we're dealing with such difficulties and trials and frustrations and troubles and all of that, we can just dry up. And then that living water hydrates our spirit and, and it refreshes and renews. And, and that's his promise for us. It's through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the living water. I like the word passion in there too, because sometimes we think that if we're living in our passion, if we're doing what we're created to do, we won't feel dehydrated. We won't feel that, but we will. Um, mm -hmm. it's not about, it's not about the passion. It's about where the source of the energy for the passion is coming from. And right. Exactly. We yes. We could have a passion for a lot of things and may, they may not be at all in line with God's purpose right. and, and, uh, leading in our lives. That's for sure. Yeah. And, and we may have a passion for something that God has given us a passion for and right. still be without energy because we're not looking to him to be the source of where we get that That's energy. True. You know, so a lot of times we make it into the mini God instead of. Right. You know, oh, oh, yes. Okay. And by the way, <laughs> by the way, God, this is my agenda, but right. uh, you know, right. but, and, and you can come along on that. And that's right. not his uh, plan for us. Yeah. No. Yeah. Walking All about him. Way to go. Short stands for so happy our Redeemer triumphs. Okay. So how come short? Oh, well, because I'm 5'2", I'm vertically challenged. And you know, when I go to uh, shop in uh, a store, you know, the reason they call it the petite department, it's because the place is so puny. I mean, it's way over in the corner hidden. You have to ask the uh, oh, salesperson, where is the petite department? You know, and you and it's hard to find things. So I'm short, I deal with that. Um, if you're a Mrs. Size, just praise God, you know, because you have so many more options for what you could wear. But, you know, um, Jesus also talks about, you know, short Zacchaeus in the Bible and and, um, you know, that and, and Zacchaeus gave his heart to the Lord. I mean, I, and it's beautiful. He says, you know, this day I, I give all my everything, all my goods to you and everything that I owe so many times over. And it's a beautiful story of how he felt such love from the Lord and he turned his life around. And, and so that's a triumphant story. And even though we're someone like me is vertically challenged, you know, I can depend on Jesus, the strong tower. He's mighty and strong and, and he's my strength. So that's why I say for short, so happy our Redeemer triumphs. That's awesome. And I like how you, I like how you play whenever you see a weakness in yourself or like just a difference, like you're short or whatever, it's not a weakness. It's just how you are, but you always play with it. You always make it so fun. <laughs> oh, well, you know, and then when I do a women's event, it's really fun to see who the other vertically challenged women yeah. in the room are too. And that's a good deal. Oh. You know, we, we have that, that kindred spirit. Right. So your short soulmates. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. And de depends on the, the height of the heels, too, you know, as far as well, soulmate. There's that. Sorry. There's that. Life trials can be cultivators for the heart. Mm, okay. So one of the gardening tools, or even in agriculture, is this claw. You know, and it's, and, and a lot of people think, what is that? It's the claw. They don't know. It's It's that thing that grabs the hard soil and just rips through it. Because otherwise, it would be really crusty. And so farmers, um, I'm a gardener, I need to do that too, when something's crusted over. And and a heart is like that. And, and with dif life's difficulties, our heart can get really crusty. And so those those difficulties that we have can be if we allow God to use them, you know, he doesn't really cause these things. He's not causing them. He's not zapping us. He's not doing this to be, you know, like, okay, I'm, you're going to have this in your life. You're going to have an illness. You're going to have, no, that's not from the Lord, but he does allow it because then we have a choice. Can we use it for good? You know, can we use that for God's intention to see how our heart could be more pliable? So that claw that goes through the soil makes it pliable. And that, as Jesus tells us in Luke 8, 
is where the seeds can be planted. You know, they won't get in the rocky soil and the thorns and they won't be on the side of the road and they won't get parched. They'll be down in the soil and of course watered by Jesus, the living water. So those seeds of faith are from his word and from, you know, God's word. And we can plant that in our heart when it's softened and cultivated when we let the Holy Spirit do that. And then the seeds of his truth can be planted in our hearts. And then we can apply those truths to our lives and our lives are completely changed. Yeah. So that's why it's so important to recognize that we can get, you know, and it's the light at the end of the tunnel. Every time we go through a difficult, difficult situation and we just think it's hopeless, we see how the Lord brought us through and we could look behind and go, we, we made it. We made it. Okay. Here's another one. Well, God got me through the last one, so he's going to get me through this one too. And every time, every time we have that hope, I know he's going to get me through again because he's true to his promises and I trust him. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. God gives us power to do things that we think we can't. Mm, that's just about everything really, isn't it? I mean, even if we're in the kitchen cooking something like, I don't think I can do that. Or, I don't think I can have company over. I'm just not that great of a cook. Or I can't host that table at the women's luncheon at my church because my dishes aren't as pretty as somebody else's. You know, maybe just something like that. Or I certainly can't sing that song in front of anybody. I would be petrified. You know, all of those things. But when we empty ourselves of us and we are filled with the all power almighty of God for he's the creator of the universe. You don't think he can do something through us as he, if he puts that little desire in our hearts, yes, he can. And so we just step out um, even with um, social media and all the technology that I'm dealing with now. And I'm thinking, Oh Lord, how am I, how am I going to do this? And then I have Marty Swedberg to help me. Of course, and you're a, you're a wonderful help, but it is through God's power and Holy spirit that encourages me and says, yes, you can just keep trying. And we apply that to anything we're doing, taking care of a loved one um, who's ill, whatever it is, whatever life brings us. If God lays it on our heart, he can do it. He can do it through us. And we just depend on him. I have some of those too. Frequently I have where God throws me in the deep end of the pool and I know that I can't go without him. But more frequently, honestly, I'm on the other side. Like I'm on the side where I can do it, but I realize that if I do it alone without Jesus, it's just as good as I can do it right here, right now. And then it's over. Whereas if I let him do it through me, then it has eternal value. And so either which way um, God gives us the power, are we going to take it? And I love that deep end of the pool because I'm a swimmer. So, you know, it's either with Jesus, it's either uh, sink or swim. And he's and I much prefer swimming with him yeah. than sinking. Right. Thinking. Absolutely. Yes. Jesus heals spiritual blind spots and out of focus thinking. Mm. I can, uh, you know, understand this because I'm legally blind in my left eye. And uh, I was cross-eyed, had my eye straightened through surgery when I was nine and then and then uh, left eye nine, and then the right eye was straightened when I was 11. And then that was to go in sync with the left. Now, my husband says I'm still out of sync, but at least my eyes are straight. <laughs> so, you know, even though my eyes are straight on the outside, my heart wasn't on the inside. And so I still had spiritual blind spots, even though I have physical ones. I had the the spiritual ones where I couldn't see everything. I'd hear I'd hear the word of God. Uh, someone would say something, but it it wasn't my heart wasn't cultivated. It wasn't letting it in. And so that's why and, and fuzzy out of focus. Well, I'm really grateful that I have contact lenses. I'm grateful that I have, um, you know, readers to help me, uh, you know, all kinds of helps that we have so we can see better. And that's what God's word, you know, gives us that he gives us uh, he repairs our focus. Hmm. He gives us the um, the power that we need to see clearly, to see, you know, and someday it's going to be 2020 when we get to heaven. Won't that be amazing? It really will be amazing. And it will be able mm -hmm. yeah, to understand everything we couldn't understand now will make sense when we're there. And uh, this has been so great. It went so fast. Carol, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, today. oh my blessing. Great to be with you, Marnie. Thanks so much. Love your heart and your ministry. And you guys, you can learn more about Carol if you go to womenspeakers.com, click on California. You're going to find her there. 
and her name is C-A-R-O-L-E Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R, and that's her website, carolbrewer.com. Thanks so much for joining us. See you next time. Bye-bye now.